Epcot with a behind the scenes tour, but Sebastian's Bistro for dinner and then Hollywood Studios tonight. I'm Dan and you're watching WDWAO which stands for Walt Disney World Adults Only. Thank you for joining me today here at the Riviera Resort at Walt Disney World. We're probably about two thirds for our trip by now. It's going so, so fast. Um, today we've had a little bit of a lay-in. It's 10 to 10 at the moment. We've got to get across to Epcot for our tour which I'll tell you about very shortly. But last night was really, really great fun at Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. By the time we got back and I took that makeup off and got into bed, it was half past one, so we had a very, very well deserved lay in. David's not feeling 100% well again today, which isn't great. Um, but we have got a little tour booked at Epcot behind the scenes. It only cost about $35. I'll put the price on the screen for you. We did get a DVC or annual pass discount applied to that as well, which saved us quite a bit of money, which was great. Um, so we're going to do the tour, we're going to get some breakfast before we do that. Uh, we might do a little bit of um, hanging out at Epcot, checking out the booths at the Food and Wine Festival. We're going to come back here for a little bit of a relaxation time. Tonight we're going across the Caribbean Beach Resort, just across there, um, to Sebastian's Bistro, another restaurant that we've not dined at. And then tonight, uh, we're going to go back to Hollywood Studios. Um, I want to get those pictures with the lightsabers in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. That, that's the kind of the main priority. So Hollywood Studios tonight, it is extended hours for deluxe resort guests. I'm not sure if we will or won't stay for those because David isn't feeling 100% well. Um, but we'll let you know how the day progresses. Um, tomorrow we've got a very early start, so we may not do those extended hours. But if we do, of course we'll show you. Um, but for now, let's go and get on the Skyliner and head across the park. So it looks like we're going towards the Hollywood Tower Terror, and we are. Um, but very shortly, we'll come up to a turning station. It's not a station where you can get on or off of the Skyliner, but it does turn you and send you in a different direction because we don't want to be going towards the Hollywood Tower. We want to be going to Epcot, which is um, kind of over there. I don't know if you can see the ball. It's just behind the trees. As we come out, there you are, Spaceship Earth. Can you see that just over there? So the turning station in a minute will turn us and send us back in that direction. Is this the right building for Remy's, do you think? This green one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. It's huge. Yeah. That's what I was just thinking. Good you. Well, very well, thank you. Yourself. So the Magic Kingdom guy told me last night at security to hold out my power pack, my camera, and also my glasses case. It was a glasses case making me get searched. So I held all three of those out and I still got stopped and searched. And today it was in the umbrella. We've never had an umbrella in this bag before. So um, today it was the umbrella that got me stopped. Anyway, we're in Epcot now. The crowd levels at the moment look quite nice. I don't want to preempt that. I'm still coming in through the International Gateway so it could get worse before it gets better. Um, but certainly it looks, um, it looks a lot less crowded uh, than the other days when we've come into the park here. So yeah, hopefully the crowd levels are dying back down again now for the last few days of our trip. So those and crowds actually separate into two parts. This is the park here. And just across here, they have the dining room as well. And then this is the restaurant where you can book those um, dining packages to watch the fireworks from. So yeah, you, you check in here if you're going to the dining room and the pub is just behind there. People are going in the pub already. It's quarter past 10, that's a very, very good effort. This appears to be something new for the 100 celebration. It's a new painting on the hoardings. 
to find your favourite characters in the World Showcase. I can see Olaf over there in Norway. Where's Snow White? Oh yeah, Snow White down there in Germany. This is quite a cool little game to play, Pinocchio. He's up there, Princess Tiana is down there. There's Princess Aurora over here. And Peter Pan flying there above Hampton Court. Mary Poppins is down there as well. So we're in the Land Pavilion, ready for our tour. We're gonna get some breakfast. Now, I haven't been to Sunshine Seasons since 2015. I didn't have a great experience, but Courtney tells me this is an amazing place to eat, so let's give it a try and see if Courtney's try it. I don't think she is. I don't think she is. But we'll give it a go, yeah? I don't trust her. You don't trust her? No, she stays at the Swan Delta Club. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at some of the desserts we've got in here. That looks like cream brulee, they've got cookies and cream chocolate mousse. The turtle brownie, now I know that's very popular. A fruit tart, a key lime parfait, and then a peanut butter whoopie pie. That sounds delicious. So we come to Sunshine Seasons for breakfast, because to Courtney told me it was amazing, and honestly, I'm not amazed. Um, it's a bit like a canteen cafeteria, which is what kind of what you expect for a theme park um, quick service, but for breakfast, they've got two. They've got basically two options, which is um, either a uh, croissant with um, egg, omelette, and ham, or a pastry. Um, they had cinnamon buns, chocolate croissants, normal croissants, muffins, and I was expecting more. I was expecting to get a breakfast here, but there isn't. So um, a little bit disappointing. Anyway, it cost us um, twenty-four dollars fifty-six cents for um, a ham, an egg croissant, a chocolate croissant. Um, and then two coffees. It doesn't look great, does it? It's just like an omelette. Is it warm? No, it's not. It's not even warm. It was faintly warm when we got it. Okay. How is it? It's all right. It's just ham, ham and uh, egg. Nothing special. Oh. It's dripping some kind of water out of the bottom. Of it. What is the water? But it was ten dollars as well. Eleven dollars. Yeah, it was eleven dollars. Um, it was ten ninety nine. Eleven dollars for that, and it's not particularly hot. It's meh. My chocolate croissant was fine. Nothing amazing. Disappointingly, though, they don't even have like fresh milk here for the coffee. Probably wouldn't buy coffee here again. I'd probably go to the Joffrey stand instead. So the chuck-in for Behind the Seeds is actually over near Soaring. And then there's a little um, check-in desk over here. I don't know if you can see it. Um, the land Behind the Seeds. And this is where you check in for the tour just over here. So we're all checked in for the Behind the Seeds tour now. We've got our little backstage thing. <laughs> We've got about 25 minutes to kill before the tour starts, so we're just going to go and do watch that awesome planet video video thing. It's quite nice, isn't before it? Before our tour at uh, half 11. So, as David said, we're going to do Awesome Planet before we do our Behind the Seeds tour. I've just checked on the app. Behind the Seeds tour is definitely $45 at the moment. I'm pretty sure it was $35 when we booked it and then we got an annual pass holder DVC discount off of that as well. And I think we paid about $29, but I'll check that and I'll put it on the screen for you um, to let you know what we paid. But it's $45 now, it's gone up quite a lot over the last couple of years. Um, anyway, Awesome Planet um, is a really, really nice little film that gives you a little look at our planet and makes us kind of more aware of what we're doing to the planet and about climate change and stuff. Um, and I would recommend it. Um, so we've got 25 minutes. This is a 10 minute wait. This show is of 10 minutes. So in theory, we've got time to do this and then get back down rather than just sitting outside, living with the land, which is currently down. The wait for soaring this morning, it's 11.21. And the wait time is 60 minutes for soaring around California. So that's pretty high wait time for that, really. Maybe because it's been rethemed to the California one that it's got a bit more popular. But generally, you wouldn't wait that long for soaring.
I'm very, I know it is. Alrighty, so welcome to the Integrated Pest Management Research Laboratory. The big black piece around the back of your ear. And then once we are all on, on channel two, hopefully you will hear me like a beneficial Thank wasp. You. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if you ever saw me talking to you. He's made me go out of my chair. Can we try to help you? <laughs> Please help oh. me. There we go. So, let's uh, turn it on. Oh my god, are they going in your size? There's a little switch on the side. There we go. Ow. Okay. Oh, okay. So, is there anybody who cannot hear So what happens is when he feels that human touch, he wants to try and hide. So he's going to withdraw all the water in his cells to make himself as small as possible. And then once he feels like there's no longer a threat, he'll redistribute all that water back out and be all big and full and beautiful like he is right now. Where they're native to along the equator around the world, they spread by these little flowers that you see here. The little purple is the light. Give me a big night-night, Stanley. Night-night, Stanley. Night, night, Stanley. Stanley. Oh, oh, what? Oh, that is crazy. Oh, time for a little taste test. So even if cucumbers are not your go-to snack, I still highly recommend at least trying one of these guys. So when I was a child, that was actually snack of the wall. Do you want to Stanley? Yeah. Are you? Yes. <laughs> so we've just come out of the um, behind the seeds tour. Um, it has gone up today. From today, uh, I was right. It was $35, it's now $45. It's quite a big price increase, isn't it? So uh, it was great. It was now a tour. Uh, we were taken through the greenhouses, shown loads of stuff. We got to meet Stanley, who's a plant if you touch, he kind of shies away, uh, which is quite cute. Um, we got to try some cucumber that have been grown now. Uh, we got an explanation of all the different kind of plants and, and how they grow things, Hydropro hydroponics, is that how you say it, David? Um, yeah, it was fascinating. It was really, really interesting. I'm really glad that we've done it. It's been on my list we've been for quite a long time. It's a fairly inexpensive tour. Um, yeah, I would recommend it 100%. So if you're here and you've got an interest in living with the land or gardening or how stuff is grown or just even being seen backstage at Epcot, you know, it's, it's great. Um, so yeah, I really, really like that. So I'm not sure what we're going to do now. We're probably going to head over to the Seas and Nemo. We're in the virtual queue for the Moana walkthrough. Um, we're going to try and get a Guardians of the Galaxy um, virtual queue at 1. I've got an alarm set on my phone for 5 to 1. So we're trying to get that um, virtual queue for Guardians. Yeah, no, it's a good day so far. It's not the hottest day. It's currently 28 degrees. The crowds have picked up a little bit here, but it's not crowded like it has been the last kind of three or four days. I think people have gone back now after that Columbus Day weekend. And you, Mr. Greenfingers, what did you think of Behind the Seeds store? Yeah, it was good. It's nice to go and see everything and see what they grow. Did and you know how they grow it as well, because they grow everything in sand, don't they? Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? So, uh... Yeah, it was good for someone who loves plants. It was so uh, good to see different ways that they're growing things, training different plants up, you know, different techniques. So yeah, it was good. You should definitely do it if you come. I am a little gardening geek. But, yeah. Um, Did you learn anything new? 
Stanley was new. Stanley, do you want to get a Stanley? I want to get a Stanley. Yeah. Okay, a slight change in plan. We were going to the seas with Nemo, uh, but as we got there, we got called for our virtual queue for Moana. So we thought we'll come and do this first, and then we'll go to the seas after. So let's go and see what this is all about. I'm soaked now. So we've just done Moana journey of water and in summary I'm going to go one and done. How about you? If you want to see water, go in your hotel bath and turn on the tap. <laughs> no, it's nice, it, it's pretty, it's nice to go and see it. Hon is. Honestly it's a walk through with some water. Don't change your plans for it. No, don't queue up for an hour to do it. Um, we're going to do the uh, Seas with Nemo now. Uh, then Spaceship Perth, I think. And we're going to head over, maybe get some food. And we're also in the virtual queue now for Guardians as well, our favourite ride. <laughs> you save the galaxy? On your own? Uh, no, with you. With me, alright then. Came over to the Seas with Nemo. It's now a 30 minute wait. We're not prepared to wait 30 minutes, are we? It's this cute little like walk on ride, not so hard to wait 30 minutes for. But interestingly, while we're here, the seagulls have gone. There's no still wish Yeah, there's no swoosh and wave and seagulls, and it's all looking a little bit empty here. I would rather uh, wait in a line for Spaceship Earth than I would for Season yeah. Nemo, wouldn't you? Like a break room. Dame Judy. A little bit of Dame Judy, darling. That's much more reasonable, a 15 minute wait for Spaceship Earth. Well, for that. Go pull your t-shirt out, enjoying the view. Hello. 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 If you've chosen different language, do you think it's still Dame Judy? No, I don't know. I wouldn't have thought so, I don't think she can speak. She's a lovely lady, but I don't think she can speak all those languages. America, now connected from the Atlantic. Oh, my face has gone completely. It's only about a 10 minute wait, wasn't it? Walk on. We didn't stop walking. Welcome back, Night Traveler. It wasn't, it wasn't a long wait at all. So this booth is called um, Bubbles and Brine. It's quite a new booth for this year. Uh, it wasn't here before, to my knowledge. And we've gone for the crab claw that comes with like a mustard uh, and lemon. So we're gonna give that a try. Okay, let's 
try a little bit of this with the mustard. Now crab and mustard is just like I would normally put together, but let's see how it tastes. Oh my god. That's amazing. The crab is really really fresh and really solid. Like when I say solid, it's, 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 it's like quite, quite meaty. It's fish. Fishy, meaty, I don't know, hangs out. But then the uh, mustard is like a kind of like a whole grain mustard sauce. And the two flavors really could complement each other really well. David, try. So like the mustard sort of overpowers the crab a bit, doesn't it? I think because you had quite a small piece of crab, I had quite a big bit of crab and it didn't. Do you like the flavor combination? Yeah, I wouldn't, put it, I wouldn't have put it together before, would you? Never, I would never have considered it, but it works. Yeah, it does. Really good. The crab was really lovely, but it was a little bit messy to eat, but actually it was really, really delicious. It had quite a lot of flavor. You thought the mustard overpowered the crab a little bit, but I didn't find that. I really, really liked it. The crab was really juicy, really flavorful. And as you can see, um, we've demolished there's it. Left. There's not There's not much left. There's some on the table where, um, where you flicked it, but apart from that. So we just got the frozen rosemary from Joffrey's just over across there near the UK pavilion just before the island booth. We've got a frozen rosemary, we've got um, a donut and an M&M cookie to try. I've seen Victoria from Disney in detail eating these donuts so many times I've never tried one. So they must be good because she's getting them every trip so they must be great. So I'm going to try the donut. David's got the M&M cookie, let's just try this see how this tastes. That is so nice. I'm a particular lover of um, strawberry and rose anyway. The, the flavour combination, I love rose flavour things, Turkish Delight and rose syrup and rose gin. The drink. It's nice, it's quite sweet, isn't it? And for the donut, I've gone for the blue one. Oh my God, this is massive. Is it bigger than my face? <laughs> nearly is. Not quite. Not quite, but nearly. Oh You're going to have to help me out with this, I think. I don't know, I can't. Right, here we go. It's surprisingly quite light. When you look at it, it looks like quite a heavy, big, big donut, but it's actually quite airy and quite light. It's quite nice. The icing's really good, I love icing, so it's really good. I only got this because it looks like the Smarties cookies that you used to get in the UK. Yeah, it's literally like, uh, yeah, it's really good. How is it? It's a Smarties cookie. Nice? Yeah. Very nice? We're currently at the Skyliner station, but you can spot our room up there because David's got a bright green towel he's put on the balcony to dry. You can spot it a mile off. He's got the Bottega towel. The Bottega, Vanessa towel. Yeah. Okay, we are now ready for dinner at Sebastian's Bistro. A new restaurant to me and obviously to David as well, he's not been there. Um, it's a table service restaurant. Uh, at Caribbean Beach Resort. We can actually walk from here to Caribbean Beach. It's a short walk across. We're gonna head across there now. Um, it's a kind of, um, one of these menus where they bring the food to your family style, you get everything. So they bring you kind of the, the appetizer, the entree, and then for dessert, they've got a pineapple, coconut bread pudding, which is a bit like the one at Ohana. Um, but that's a banana one, and this one is meant to be better, and I love that one at Ohana, so I'm excited to try that. I'm not sure we're gonna go to Hollywood Studios tonight. Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party was a very late night last night. We got back quite late, and by the time I took all my makeup off from that costume, uh, I think I spent about 1.30, so I feel quite tired. We've got a really early start tomorrow for the Wild Africa Trek at Animal Kingdom, and I really wanna enjoy that, so I think maybe, after dinner, we might just come back here and chill for the evening, but we'll decide after dinner. 
David's pretty much there decided he's not coming, so it might just be me, or it might be neither of us. So uh, we'll update you after, but we may not be going to Hollywood Studio State after all. The reception store, the lady on reception, they did just tell me that this resort originally was going to be like a, um, going to be like an extension of Caribbean Beach. It was going to be like a tower, like they've got at Coronado Springs. It was going to be Caribbean themed, and then quite late into the planning, they decided to make it a European Riviera French Italian theme. So initially this was going to be part of the Caribbean Beach Resort. I'm glad it's not, because the Caribbean Beach Resort is already so enormous. To have this as a separate resort, I think, is a, is a much better thing. And I, I prefer the theme in as well. So anyway, I'm going for a little walk now around. And then we're going to take you for dinner at Sebastian's. So from over here at Caribbean Beach, you actually get like quite a nice view of our hotel across the water. But there's one thing that really bothers me about it. It's not symmetrical. You kind of got like it much bigger over this side than that side and this one jutting out that way. I don't know, I just, I just, I just don't like that. I, I, I want it to be neat and like the same. For, for a company like Disney, who normally aesthetic is everything and is at the forefront of everything they do and image and... and I, I mean, who at Disney said that this is finished? I mean, I don't know. And now you're in for a real treat. I'm going to show you what I call the penis pool. And you will never ever look at this pool in the same way again now. So you're welcome. So there's one penis there, two penis, three penis, four penis, five penis. This is the penis pool. And I'm sure they've done that on purpose because someone's got a really, really cool sense of humor. Yeah. Now I can't unsee it. And now I've got four more penises. One penis, two penis, three penis, four. I can't unsee it now. <laughs> Did you like that? Welcome to the penis pool. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor really enjoyed her stay here. Sebastian's Bistro is family style food where you get a bit of everything. So uh, we've met our way to Joe, he's been over and seen us. We've ordered some drinks. I've ordered a create your own rum where you choose which rum you have, which bitters you have, and which syrup you have. So I've gone for an applewood rum, I think it's one they recommend, uh, with grapefruit bitters and a honey mango syrup. David, you've gone for a stout, I believe, is that right? Yeah. Uh, and then in here, it all comes family style. So first we get some bread with some guava butter and some caramelized onion chutney. Uh, that comes with a salad. Uh, and then after the salad, you get like a load of um, protein. You get chicken, beef, pork, and a sustainable fish. And you get three sides with that. You get a vegetable curry, um, some vegetables, and um, I think rice and beans, cilantro rice and beans. Um, so it's going to be a lot of food. They do have free enhancements, so I really want to have the coconut shrimp. But it's going to be so much food that we're not going to eat it all anyway. I don't really like wasting food, so um, rather than waste food, I've just gone without. And I'm a little bit sad about that because I would love to have had that. Um, but anyway, it is what it is. Um, there's going to be so much lovely food coming, I'm sure. And then you get a dessert, which is a bread pudding. Uh, which is coconut and pineapple. As you would know from this series, it's my two of my favorite flavors. Um, it's a coconut and pineapple bread pudding and that comes with ice cream and a kind of sauce of some kind. Of course, we're gonna show you that. So we've got a dragon stout. Have you had that before? Taste? Taste? Maybe I've had it before. Give it a little taste. Oh, that's lovely. Is it? After drinking lager for like a week and a half. <laughs> and then we've got pull apart rolls down here with a Mickey crisp on top, a caramelized onion jam, and there's a guava butter that's gonna still to come. 
And here we've got a salad that's got some uh, caramelized pumpkin seeds and some, do you think it's called watermelon radish? Radish, edible flowers. Uh, and it's got a key lime dressing. Looks like quite a nice salad actually for Disney. Yeah, it looks like as well. Norm normally you get some uh, just some green shoved on a plate and dressing, and it all wilts and everything. But that actually looks really nice. Okay, so I've got an old-fashioned and create your own. So I've got, uh, as I said, it's rum, grapefruit bitters, and a honey mango syrup. So let's give this a little try. You can smell that grape for immediately. That's really, really nice. Oh my god, I love that. It's really, really nice. And I created it myself. Right, <laughs> let's dig in and I'm going to tell you what the food is like. I'm really excited for this. So here we've got some broccoli, uh, a vegetable curry, and then some cilantro, or we, what we would call in the UK coriander, rice and beans. Then over here we've got some flank steak, some chicken, some shredded pork, and then some sustainable fish as well. And I think this is some kind of mango chutney on the side there. So yeah, quite a lot of food for us, but we're going to tuck in and uh, we'll let you know what we think. And now I'm on to the Goon Bay Smash. Sounds like a nightmare, doesn't it? So let's just taste it, I'll tell you what it is. Oh my god, that's amazing. So this is one of their speciality cocktails, the Goon Bay Smash. Una Memento, let me read it to you. It's Bacardi Superior Rum, Carrot Bay Coconut Rum, Plantation Original Dark Rum, Sweet and Sour, and Pineapple Juice. That's got three different rums in there, and, it, and it's strong. So that's really good. That is $15. The Create Your Own Rum was $17. And David has had two of these um, Dragon Stouts. They're $9.25, so he's the cheap date tonight. Anyway, let's talk to you about the food here. So, the, the bread, uh, the, the actual bread was nothing special. It was pull apart rolls. Warm, nice, no, nothing stand out, nothing amazing, but, but good. The guava butter and the caramel onion jam, however, was a completely different story. They, they were special, they were unique. You put them on top of each other and that is a, an incredible flavour combination. I could have eaten that bread with that guava butter and caramel onion, caramelised onion jam all day. And the salad was really fresh, it was crisp. The key lime dressing was really nice, you could taste the lime in it, really like that, that was good. And then the main course came and honestly it was a feast. Now we're not finished yet, but so far this is one of the nicest meals I've had on this trip. And I was not expecting to say that to you because I was expecting this to be one of those one and done restaurants or review the bad place and, and kind of try to be nice. I don't need to, it was amazing. So we just had flank steak, cooked medium, really, really nice. I ate quite a bit of the steak. The chicken, now I am not a person that's bones in meat, and as I've told you this before, I'm a bit weird. So any meat that's got a bone in it is something normally I wouldn't choose. And a chicken thigh, um, I tried it, I ate quite a bit of it. It's not really my thing, but the chicken was really juicy, it was flavoured really well, so I like that. The fish was really delicate, um, it kind of melted, melted in your mouth really, it was, it was a really nice white fish. It's got like a kind of ratatouille on top. I, I don't care for that. I don't like tomatoes. So I didn't really try the ratatouille. And I'm not a pork person. I don't really eat pork at all. But it came shredded and I tried that. The pork was really nice. Um, it had uh, a citrusy flavour to it, which was really great. And it came with like a mango chutney and that was really, really nice. The mango was delicious. We then had the cilantro rice. That was overcooked, unfortunately. Um, and not very hot, it was kind of just warm. I didn't try the vegetable curry, but the broccoli was cooked perfectly. It was cooked al dente, al dente, al, da, al dente. Uh, the broccoli was nice. You know, all that I've had so far tonight, it's a big thumbs up. Every mouthful has been delicious, though. I've really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, I agree. It's been really good. Joe, our server is not intrusive, not always here, so that's, that's good. 
especially at a Disney restaurant. <laughs> um, food was one of the best we've had, I think, isn't it? Nice. Yeah. But surprisingly nice, right? Yeah. You wasn't expecting a good meal here tonight. No, I was expecting it to be a bit bad. But the restaurant's lovely. The restaurant's really modern. It feels with like really clean, tidy. Um, yeah, all the food's been really good. The rice was a little bit overcooked, but it was fine. It was fine and nice. I'm actually going to try and make that when I get home. Some How was the vegetable rice. curry? Vegetable curry was fine. It was just a basic, like a very basic vegetable curry you would make at home, I guess. So it was fine. Um, yeah, good food. Definitely come here and try it. So I have heard so many amazing things about this pineapple coconut bread pudding. So let's tuck in and give it a try. I'm really excited for this. I'm going to, need to have a dip in the penis pool after this, I think. Oh my god, it's amazing. Okay, right, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say I've got a new favourite dessert of all Disney World. There's nothing I can think of that's nicer than this. This is the best dessert of all Disney World. You heard it here first, people. So we've just finished dining at Sebastian's Bistro. Wow. I was not expecting to be giving you this review. In my head, it was gonna be a mediocre, quite bad, but it's not, it's really, really great. If you get a chance to come and eat here, please do it. It's probably one of the cheapest family style meals that I've come across ever at Walt Disney World. So it's about $38 a head. And for that, you get the free courses. You get all the food, the bread, the salad, the meats, or the plant-based option, all the sides, uh, and the dessert. They do rum flights. It's not rum flight. They do make your own rum old fashioned. Honestly, it was so good. It's probably one of the cheapest meals we've had with the most food, with the most delicious food. The staff were lovely. The server we had, Joe was great. So, scoring. Now, I do overscore a little bit according to David, but I'm gonna go for the nine out of 10 here because for me, this was really great. I'm not comparing Sebastian's and Citrico's, of course. I'm taking this for what it is. It's a table service restaurant, serve family style, um, at a moderate resort. But I'm going for a nine out of 10. I think it was really, really great. And I 100% recommend you, oh, and I 100%, that's the rum. I 100% recommend you get a reservation here to give it a try yourself. Everything was delicious and it's a real little hidden gem. No, you just, I think you just made me change my score because now I feel bad now. Originally I was going to give this a seven. And you're changing that? Can I just say you look very nice in this lighting? Oh, so did you actually. Oh, I'm just going to stand here forever. I guess for what it is I give it an eight. An eight? Yeah, I think so. I think it wasn't... Um, do you know what, I just don't like the family style serving here. That's but not your I thing, just, is it? I hate it. And then we all, between us, we always have food left over, which I hate as well. You're scoring them down because you had too much food? Yeah. Okay. Would you recommend people come and give it a try? Oh yeah, it's good. It's nice here. Yeah, oh it's really gosh. nice. It's so much better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a disaster, actually. <laughs> I thought it was going to be like garden, what's it, garden grill kind of place. I don't You've know never why. been to garden grill? I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a 9 out of 10 for me, a 10 out of 10 for you. 8 uh, out of 10. What did I say? 10 out of ten. Oh. Eight. Eight. Oh, sorry, I've, I've had a little bit too much of that rum. 8 out of 10 for you, 9 out of 10 for me. Um, so overall, a really good meal, right? Yes. So um, what are we going to do now? Are we going to Hollywood Studios? I don't think so. No, you're not well, are you? 
No, we might just stop, get a little drink at the thing. At Bar Riva. Bar Riva. At the Riviera. And then just hotel room, chill tonight. We need to be ready for the morning. Yeah, we've got a very early start tomorrow. We've got to be at Animal Kingdom for quarter. So we've got to be at Animal Kingdom tomorrow by eight o'clock. So we'll leave here about quarter past seven. It's and it's going to be a long tour and stuff, so. Yeah. Yeah. So we are going to leave you now for today. This is the end of today's vlog. It's not been the most exciting day to bring you along on a vlog, but we did do some good stuff. Early start tomorrow. I'm not going to go to Hollywood Studios. We're going to go back to our resort. Little drink at Bar Riva, as David said. Off to the room. A little bit of TV. I've still got my Gravedigger's mix popcorn from Magic Kingdom last night. So maybe a little bit of popcorn. We will see you again next week. Um, and tomorrow we're going to Animal Kingdom in the morning to do that wild Africa trek. So that should be really interesting. And then we have got um, Hollywood Studios in the afternoon and evening. We're going to Sci-Fi Dining. We're going to Ogre's Cantina. And the big thing on my list is to get that picture with the lightsaber in Galaxy's Edge. So I want to get some Galaxy's Edge lightsaber pictures. So wish me luck. May the force be with me. Anyway, that's the end of today's vlog. Thank you so much for coming along with us. We have loved bringing you along on our kind of like less exciting day. Anyway, less exciting or not, give it a big thumbs up. That really helps us out. It helps other people find the video. If you like our channel, please subscribe. Ensure that little notification bell is clicked as well to get told when next week's one comes out. And as always, remember, never grow up.